in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed what's her name what's his name Nathaniel. Nathaniel. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, watch this. This right here is not just about a child. It's about the God who can make what he says come to pass. Are we together now? Stretch your hands towards this giant in the spirit. Help those under the anointing. Please stretch your hands and declare, Nathaniel, we decree and declare in the name of Jesus that this child is a proper child. In the presence of the family, we declare empowerment by the Spirit. This boy will be like Samuel in the name of Jesus Christ. That from a tender age, he will hear the voice of God revealing the blueprint of his destiny. Nathaniel, we pray for you. You will not be raised by a widower. You will not be raised by a widow. And you will not be raised an orphan. You will never have to do anything twice to succeed. The resources to raise you in the fear of God, we release it right now. Is this the only child? In the name of Jesus, you have celebrated him for this. Go and prepare for the next one. The same way you've stood before God's people, when it is time for the next one, let nothing stop it. I don't care what the situation is. The prophetic word that brought one, in the name of Jesus, will bring as many as you desire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's celebrate them as they go back. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for the sick. Please give me Acts chapter 2 from verse 42. I just want to charge our hearts. I've had the honor and the privilege of teaching about the apostolic structure of the revival that is coming across the nations especially in Africa helping to strengthen the body of Christ to understand that there is a posture that we must take as far as preserving congratulations you have seen the glory of God Congratulations. Hallelujah. I will tell you why I raised that song. It's not just that I'm raising it just like that. Listen very carefully. I will tell you why I raised that song. When the Lord turned again the captivity hold on whose captivity why should zion be in captivity the, there is something called the captivity of zion you are god zion but sadly even in heaven there was war the bible says when the lord turned the captivity of zion that was the scripture that was in my spirit when i raised that song because there are some of you based on what you are doing for God some things should not be happening in your life but you have carried certain scars 
even for the name of the Lord. It is for these people that God is raising this song. Listen very carefully. Some of you are men of God with integrity. You have rejected every room for compromise. But your decision has happened at a cost. It has affected even your potential for influence. It has affected so many things. And sometimes that human factor in you will say, God, but look at me. Remember what happened to Abraham. A great man valiant with so many things. By this song, God is saying the remaining part of your life that is yet to experience the glory of God. Because there are people who have experienced certain things like Naaman. The Bible says he was the captain of the Syrian army. He was a man who was valiant in war. But that leprosy was there. The song I'm singing is not for the areas you have seen result. It is for that one area. Those two areas. It is true that you are being used mightily. But there is a sickness that they diagnose within you. And it looks like how am I going to walk? This song is for you. Congratulations, you have seen the glory of God. Congratulations, He has done it for me. And you will come back with a new song to sing. Congratulations. Hallelujah. I hope you know that when God visits people, it's not only their spiritual lives that are affected. God is benevolent. If you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly father? He says, who is it that you would ask for a fish and he will give you a serpent? Or you ask for bread and he will give you a stone? God is that meticulous to see your holistic development. That your life becomes a capture, an expression of every possibility that can be found in the Christ. So spiritually he sees that you do well. But let me tell you, the God that we preach is not the God that ignores other areas of your life. Just focusing on your spiritual growth. No, he lays emphasis on your spiritual development. But he's kind enough to stretch to every part of your life, including numbering the strand of your hair. Because sincerely speaking, for some of you, you came for this miracle service. Your problem is not spiritual lukewarmness. Your problem is money, period. You are in trouble right now, financially. Am I lying? There's nothing to lie about. I mean, let's not make a fool of ourselves. There are times that you need, listen, there are times that you need God to help you to water your farm so that it will grow your corn properly. But there are times you need bread immediately because you will not even live to survive when harvest will come. God can give seed and he can give bread. He's the same God. Hallelujah. There are men of God whose challenge is not integrity. God has helped them. But their challenge is to be able to get a conducive place where God's people can worship. My God is able to sort out the issues that make for life and for godliness. And let me stand again upon the grace of every man of God here and to declare over someone in the name of Jesus. This year's edition of this Abel Kutas Believers Meeting will capture the entirety of your blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you're a prayer warrior that is broke, you will love God, but your pain will lead you to compromise. If you are a believer that has money and you don't have your integrity and your work with God, the pride and complacency and the attacks that come by reason of not having a strong spiritual foundation will frustrate everything again. I am an advocate of the whole counsel of God, the holistic growth and development of the saints in order of priority your spiritual life, but it should extend to every other area of your life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. The Bible says, and they continued steadfastly. You want to understand the entire book, you have to read the first 41 verses. Acts chapter 2 starts by saying, now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were gathered together in one accord. Remember the Pentecost experience? And then um, as a result, 
they were filled with the Holy Spirit the men came and doubted that they were drunk with new wine and Paul began to speak in fact let me do a one or two minutes recap of my teaching in the morning we took from Matthew chapter 16 and the Holy Spirit began to guide us to understand that Jesus said this rock upon this rock and I did tell you that that rock is revelation number one revelation of the builder who is Christ himself because that was the beginning of the discourse who do men say that I the son of man is and then number two the revelation of the modus operandi of the kingdom the revelation that for you to make progress and advance in the kingdom to be formidable such that you are immune from the rich and the victory of the gates of hell it must be a combination of your press for light and illumination and the grace to walk in obedience Jesus was teaching about building on the rock and he said he that heareth my sayings and doeth them he is like one who builds on a rock the one who builds on sand is he that heareth but then does not obey and he says for both of them there are three elements that will come to test the stability of their structure number one is the rain number two is the flood number three is the wind it came upon the one who built on a rock and it came upon the one who built on sand the difference is that the one who built on the rock stood are we together now so when Jesus said upon this rock he was not just talking of himself alone thou art Peter and upon this rock upon this revelation upon this template I will build my church what is the template that number one the church will only make progress their progress as a church and the formidability of the church to ward off the effect and the victory of the gates of hell will be founded on number one their revelation of me as the builder the Christ the Messiah he called it hallelujah and then number two that for every dimension of authority you are going to get an access in the spirit there is a light component that empowers that revelation remember we discussed revelation chapter 5 i wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scrolls and the elder tapped me and he said weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has prevailed deserving to open the book and unlock the scroll he said i looked towards the throne and i saw the lamb as though it had been slain having seven eyes i told you these are the seven major levels or realms of revelation that every believer must access and connecting every eye was a horn which is a symbol of authority authority in the kingdom is light dependent the dimension of revelation you access if you access it in truth has a corresponding level of spiritual authority that matches that so when you claim to have authority at level four say and yet the light level spiritual illumination is level two you only have authority at level two Jesus demonstrated all seven levels of revelation and all seven levels of authority the highest level of authority that the believer can command is the authority that comes through sacrifice that was why even while Jesus was on earth he was not walking in all seven levels is the reason why he could raise the dead but he could not give anyone eternal life there was no one who Jesus gave eternal life before he died and rose again everybody he rose from the dead died again everybody he healed probably went through the natural depreciation of age until they died but when Jesus rose again there was something he had in his resurrection that he did not have in his earth work. He could give them eternal life and he empowered the disciples. He said, now go. There were many times he told them go, but this time around, it was not just to go and preach the kingdom. He gave them authority, not only to forgive sins, he gave them authority to impart life, even life eternal by the spirit, through the preaching of the word of faith, according to Romans 10 from verse eight to 13. so acts 2 42 the bible says they continued steadfastly please listen carefully the first word i want us to examine tonight very quickly is the word continue continue demands stamina 
continue demands endurance beyond the limitations that emotions bring it is very easy to start but continuation of anything is proof of the determination to remain there it says they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine the same way many of you have continued in this conference right from the beginning of the week morning afternoon evening many of you have endured through hunger through the sun through the rain this is what you are doing they continued sound doctrine requires endurance not just attentiveness are we together now it says they continued steadfastly number one in the apostles doctrine number two in fellowship number three in the breaking of bread and number four in prayers you would see the effect of that as God multiplied and added daily as many as should be saved please watch this this is the apostolic template that was given to us by those who were mentored by Jesus firsthand this is how they grew the church and they built the church these four components must be jealously guarded and preserved even as we look forward to this glorious move of God that is already upon us as a nation as a continent and even within this dispensation many people pray for revival we cry for revival but we do not prepare for it the sons of Issachar the Bible says they had an understanding of the time and they knew what Israel ought to do the Bible is full of people who did not expect visitations but the visitations came and when it left it left them barren of any experience an example was Jacob in Genesis 28 the Bible says he came to a place called Luz where his father had had a covenant there and he put a stone there to sleep in Genesis 28 the Bible says he saw a ladder that was ascending to the heavens is that in your Bible and angels ascending and descending he got up and said surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not he said this is the gate of heaven he was not discerning to receive there was no record of any transformation that happened to him by reason of that encounter the next time this encounter would happen would be chapter 32 having spent a total of over 20 years in the house of Laban he dismissed his wives he dismissed his cattle the Bible says when he was alone a man now came to him and he held him he said leave me for the day breaketh he said I will not let you go now he was intentional he remained with him and he said what is your name he said Jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called Jacob for as a prince you have had power with God and you have prevailed and the Bible says he touched the hollow of his thigh and blessed him the sun arose he called the name of the place Peniel he says for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved the Bible is full of men and women who had encounters some were changed by it some were not changed by it some were spectators and witnesses for instance in one of the synoptic accounts when Jesus was having the experience of the transfiguration he was praying are we together now the Bible says a, a cloud came and filled the place and then the disciples saw Moses and Elijah instead of them to be thinking of how to be changed by that experience they said it's good that we are here let's get blankets quickly because evening will come Moses will want to sleep Elijah you can see the response to a deep spiritual experience they were responding in a carnal way they saw Moses and Elijah they were representing spiritual realities but because they were bankrupt of the hearing eyes the the hear, the seeing eyes and the hearing ears they didn't know how to respond to that spiritual experience they were thinking of blankets to sleep so it's possible that you can have a spectacular move of god and your response to it is not to be opened and be changed you want to snap the moment and as wonderful as that is just to prefer to pre, to to preserve the history of the moment and not to be changed by it let me tell you this Abel Kuta we have said it time and again it is true that the move of God is coming upon Nigeria like never before you go across the nations of Africa and you begin to see a palpable formation of that move 
Many of your fathers before they transited in glory, they saw these days and they wrote it. Some of you come as physical descent from those, that lineage. Many of them prophesied about the move of God. Many people who were not even Africans, they died and they left volumes of visions that they saw. There has to be a generation that will leave the pages of those prophecies. And by God's predeterminate counsel, it has pleased him that we become the generation that will herald that move of Jesus even before he returns. But I tell you this, celebrating the arrival of an imminent revival will not preserve it. We must be able to prepare, number one, listening to the Spirit to learn the patterns and the apostolic structure and formation that must be in place. Number two, we must respectfully look into the past because the thing that is is the thing that was. The secret of the future is still in yesterday. Yesterday traps the secret of tomorrow. We need to study what happened with Apostle Babalola. We need to study what happened with where did they miss it? Where did they get it? Not for the purpose of condemnation, but the things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning that we through the patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. Where did this man miss it? And I want to just buttress on this because you see, I've studied a bit about the revival, the move of God across Africa, across continents, but particularly our dear nation, Nigeria. And the move of God that came, especially around the 60s, the 70s, into the 80s, there were two major problems that that move suffered. I want you to listen carefully. Number one was that there was a spiritual divide of two groups of people. Number one, there were those who were sound and their emphasis was on doctrine. Are we together now? Their emphasis was on doctrine. And then there was another side by the reason of maybe their op the opportunity that they didn't have the opportunity to be as literate and educated. They had direct prophetic encounters through prayer, consecration and fasting. And they received so many things. They were open to the portals of the spirit in an unusual way. And because of the power of their encounters, and the corresponding results that happened, they did not pay attention to the place of doctrine. So there were two divides in this revival. And let me tell you sincerely, that formation that started as an imbalance still has an effect on the body of Christ today. This is my final assignment. And then we'll pray for the miracle. Even if we don't have the opportunity to take testimonies, that's fine. I need to be able to do this. There is an apostolic structure that is able to host the move of God and to preserve it. Now across the body of Christ in Nigeria and even in Africa, and I'm, you know my love and my respect and my honor for the body. So when I speak, I speak as one who is part of the system, but I also speak as one who has been granted mercy and the privilege of God's grace. There is this twofold formation right now, resuming again within the body of Christ, on one hand, there are people who are largely inclined towards the prophetic and spiritual activities through the activity of prayer and fasting and they have accessed dimensions and all kinds of things, prophetic acts that have come. I can subject myself to 30 days prayer and fasting and in it, I will see myself holding a handkerchief and wiping it on a woman's stomach and she's barren. I mean, the barrenness goes away. I can return back with that revelation to execute it as I saw it is dangerous because I must leverage on the side of doctrine to now be able to put it in perspective. The danger is if I ignore doctrine and I bring that it may work because it was from God, but the next person who did not have that encounter but have access to the physical expressions of that encounter, the devil, why was the devil looking for the body of Moses? to put a familiar spirit in that body and use the credibility that that body carried to mislead people is someone learning now so it looks like there is a divide in the body of Christ and what I'm saying is a bit touchy but please listen with an open heart usually people who are educated exposed and enlightened 
and have had a lot of influences from the West for some strange reason they seem to be strong on the place of doctrine and the Word of God and that is profitable but many times our stay on the Word of God just focuses on principles and strategies and even philosophies and we ignore the spirituality of life are we together so most people will stay with the word and they laugh at those praying they laugh at those fasting to mean it's only uneducated people who are in the villages who are just prophetic people the more you are enlightened your enlightenment should show by your passion for doctrine alone this is wrong that already is going to produce a serious disaster in the body of Christ then on the other hand there are people who will not be able to explain anything as far as doctrine is concerned you cannot even come to them and be saved but you just tell them what is your problem and they'll say give me three days they will go and lock themselves and pray for three days and have a vision be taken to the back of your house and come back and say I found the answer I was at the back of your house and at the back of your house I saw a stone somewhere go and destroy that stone and in two days God opens up doors the mistake we are making is that this dichotomy was created by the devil listen carefully the dichotomy was created by the devil either through our pride and our, our refusal to see the value of both dimensions so we have people being mentored and raised by people with an emphasis up to the prophetic visions experiences prophetic acts someone will suddenly appear in church on Sunday morning and tell you I've come with something and he may not be lying I'm not talking about false prophets no but then another person will say forget all this nonsense we're talking about you just stay on the word of God and you find people who are learning scriptures but no results no power no grace they can keep quoting it sincerely in the name of Jesus Christ I won't be sick the headache is adding in the name of Jesus nothing is wrong with me and you are worse it did last year than it was and I'm not, I'm not I'm not being sarcastic I hope you understand I apologize to you already in advance trust me I'm a good pilot we are going to balance this now it has become a thing of war you have to choose what camp you belong to so you have to choose the camp of word people you can pray for five minutes and say the most important thing is the word of god in you that may not be wrong but we need to be careful we're making a serious mistake and another person can say forget all that nonsense you just pray and fast and see what happens and they pray and fast empty of the word and a familiar spirit appears to them and they say speak lord for your servant is listening and misleads them introducing another confusion that is advocated with confidence because it came from an encounter are we together now yes. they continued steadfastly please give out that scripture four things number one doctrine these are the elements that sponsor an authentic move of God honor to doctrine comes from the Latin word doctrina it means a set of beliefs now reference from scripture that is able to build a disciple holistically they continued steadfastly in the Apostles doctrine meaning the instructions that were committed to them because they themselves and they testified that it was handed over to them it was not just an opinion are we together that all scripture was given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction in righteousness that the man of God may be entire complete a generation that does not have an appreciation for doctrine is a generation that will mismanage their spiritual experiences because doctrine defines the coordinates of your spiritual experience if you are open to the realm of the spirit and you have prophetic encounters that come by opening up your spirit you will need the stability of the word to give definition to your experiences to that is the tool you are going to use to vet whether it was sponsored by the devil or sponsored by God because Satan can appear as an angel of light 
Are we together? Pastors and leaders, we must, no matter what kind of call God has given us, we must be able to guide a people to have profound respect for doctrine. Now, please look up. There is a place you may have heard me teach. There is a place for sharing your experiences and I call them personalized dealings. But you can never build a people by sharing your opinions about God and your personalized dealings. It is dangerous. By reason of my work with God, there are certain things God has programmed into my work with Him. It is just for me and Him. It is not for the people I lead. Now, because of the results that come from obeying that unique dealing, there are certain results you will see in my life. And if you want to ask me why I am experiencing those results, I will tell you this is the extra thing God said I should do. For instance, God can speak to someone and say, empty your account and carry the only house you have. Give it. It is not giving, it's a doctrine. But that's your experience. It's not a doctrine. So you may do it and in two weeks, somebody will give you 10 billion. Someone will want to say, how did you become so wealthy like this? The moment you turn your personalized dealing into a formula to say, if you want 10 billion, sell your car, you may sell your own and for 30 years, you will not even see your destiny helper. Are we together? This is the mystery behind people acting out what they were told to do and not getting results. There is a difference between personalized dealings and doctrine. What we must teach the body of Christ is not just our experiences. Our experiences should be an added advantage to that which the word of God has already put in place. And Hebrews chapter 6 lists six doctrinal foundations of the church. Six of them. That before you attempt to step into perfection or higher levels, and he said, by the grace of God, we will. We have to lay that foundation. It is important that believers be grounded in the world. Please look at me. If Satan appears to you right now as Jesus, do you have a system through a sound understanding of the word to be able to discern and decipher that error? Don't say it will not happen. If Satan appears to you, he's not going to appear to you with horns. No. When you learn doctrine and you learn scripture, you understand the character of God. You know from the word what God can do and what God cannot do. Because we learn God through the person Jesus. And everything that was captured in the life of Jesus is an expression of who God is. We use Jesus as our manuscript to correct everything the prophets told us about God. No matter how sure they were, if we do not find it in Jesus, we have a right to probe their perception because they saw in part and they prophesied in part. Are we together? We will give ourselves to doctrine. Number two, fellowship comes from the word koinonia. It says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion, the fellowship, the participation, the sharing together of the Holy Ghost. Let it be with you. This is the second component that was captured in the early church that must be preserved in order to have the move of God in its purest form, fellowship. The first dimension of fellowship is fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The second dimension of fellowship is fellowship with the brethren in the house of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. It says, behold how good and pleasant it is, Psalm 133, when brethren dwell together in unity, that it is like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron the priest, and it flows down even to his skirt. It says, there the Lord had commanded the blessing even life forevermore they continued in fellowship there are many believers today who have a problem sitting in the house of God and listening to the Word of God and they will tell you my work with God is personal 
I, I don't need anybody. That looks very sincere, except if you are under a unique instruction, otherwise you are already in trouble. Pick a life coal, look up please. Pick a life coal from fire and just drop it away from where you picked it. Don't off it, don't pour water. What begins to happen to it? Community Christian living is the key to sustaining kingdom values. Believers in the early church were always in companies. They would always return to their companies. It is something that if we lose, your fellowship with the Holy Spirit is personal between you and Him. But do not lose touch with your fellowship with the brethren, even the house of God. Component number three, the breaking of bread. The breaking of bread here does not just talk about communion. No, the breaking of bread was a, um, would I say, it was an expression that expressed love and unity. Please listen carefully. Scripture would always use the concept of breaking of bread to express love and unity. It was talking about brethren and brethren. The breaking of bread. The revivals have been lost because of antagonism between one sect and another. They did well in terms of learning doctrine. Are we together? If you read the story, respectfully speaking, of um, Alexander Dewe and Maria Woodward Eater, it was one of the classic examples. Dewe was a great man who God was using very mightily, but something happened eventually because at the time there was no internet, so you wouldn't know what God was doing. Here comes this woman who seemed to be uneducated, who God was using very mightily, and it was the voice that they trusted that began to criticize her. And Dewey was a great man who God used mightily. He commanded the attention of politicians and all kinds of people. And yet this was the one who was fighting the next move of God. Robert Slayerdan said the current move of God always seemed to fight the next move of God. Because the moment God starts doing something new, what God is already doing now begins to fight. Just because God is doing something different from what he did before does not mean he's not the one doing it. Till today in Africa, for instance, we still fight the ministry of women rising. You see that now. There is a way the Bible describes that it should be done. But there are many people till today who do not believe that God can lift women like Deborah, like Anna, like Rahab, like Ruth, like Esther. They continued in the breaking of bread. If we want to see the move of God happen to us in a mighty way in Abelkuta, listen, you must be able to throw away your differences and be able to embrace love and embrace unity. There are certain dimensions of God's glory that cannot be captured by one man's spiritual experience. No matter how faithful you are as an individual, you are only an effective member in the body. This is one of the things that I learned. And this is why many times when I come for meetings like this, I communicate profound honor for the leaders and the vessels here. Because let me tell you, these men and women of God you see seated in front and some of you across we do not know you are powerful people with a track record and a testimony of the hand of God upon their lives and yet they come and open up themselves sincerely to listen to another man of God. It is worthy of commendation and it is worthy of emulation because this is one spirit that is missing in the body of Christ. Is someone hearing now? Yes. That means as a man, a mighty man of God, when you admit that there are dimensions that are not yet at work in you, or there are dimensions you do not see, you can sit down and listen to a man of God's message, you can be blessed by it, and it add it to your spiritual growth, and it produces a holistic person. Love and unity. Please hear me, Abel Kuta, especially for the younger generation coming. The spirit of competition, the spirit of who is greater, the spirit of whose prayer group or whose ministry is greater is a demonic spirit. Cast it out this night and cast it out in a hurry. Hallelujah. I look forward to times when 
a man of God will be organizing crusades and another one will not know him and say listen I hear that God is doing this please I have five bosses can they help in making this happen and he said who are you it does not matter I, I am just I know that you are contributing towards God what God is doing in Abelkuta genuine love and unity the spirit of competition will always destroy people including sincere people and most of us younger ministers are being mentored now in a way that if not balance can destroy us mm -mm. Mm -mm. when God anoints you and grants you grace make sure that the body of Christ benefits from the investment of the spirit over your life do not see another man of God or see another businessman and downplay the investment of God's work in their lives. Imagine that you come here, there are many pastors here. Do you know, as much as you see all of us here, if the Holy Spirit is to arrange us according to our spiritual levels, you will be surprised that some of us who are preaching to you now will be at the back in that queue. I, I've known this years ago about my life. You will be surprised at those who are standing in front, who have a track record with God, but they are the ones who will come and keep quiet right from morning till night. Is someone learning? They continued steadfastly in doctrine, in fellowship with the Holy Spirit and themselves, in the communication of love and unity. And finally, I need to say this, in prayers let nobody deceive you about the validity and the importance of prayer as far as your spiritual growth is, imp is, is, is concerned and as far as God's program is concerned when a people do not pray across a territory I assure you that territory is in trouble there is no such thing as I'm not a prayer warrior prayer is a responsibility a responsibility that is carved upon your heart by revelation are we together now you have a mandate to work out your salvation with fear and trembling you have a mandate to give diligence to these things to make your calling and your election sure when it has to do with prayer there may be people who are uniquely called and grace but he spake a parable to the end that men ought to pray and not to faint i'm saying this because there is a move that downplays prayer downplays fasting and makes it look like what is there the most there are people who don't serve god they don't pray yet they are prospering it may be sincere but they say mark the end of the wicked not the beginning you keep watching a man who has not fortified his stand with prayer is a man who is dangerous to himself and everyone around him. The revival that is coming is not just an intellectual revival with people who have physical value, engineers and doctors. Thank God for that and thank God for the seven mountains. But you must understand and you must realize that the realm of the spirit controls the physical realm. Are we together now? This is my final word to Abel Kuta. There is no such thing as I'm a word person. There is no such thing as I am a prayer person. There's no such thing as I'm a fellowship person. The Bible does not dichotomize it. If you want to be part of God's program, you must continue steadfastly in number one, doctrine. Number two, fellowship. Number three, the breaking of bread, love and unity for the brethren. And then number four, prayers. So if you find somebody who says, I'm not a prayer person, don't criticize him, tell him you are in trouble. That, that philosophy is an attack from the pit of hell. And if you find somebody who says, all I do is prayer, tell him, listen, my, my dear one, when Jesus was done praying and Satan came to him, he said, it is written, not I prayed what helped him to defend satan was it is written that means with all of his prayer i wish i had time i would have taken you to matthew chapter 4 to show you jesus balancing the ministry of the word and of prayer he prayed and fasted but when satan came he never made mention of prayer as the reason for his defense it is written was what he used but when Satan too switched to it is written, the value of prayer to have created discernment was what helped to decipher his speakings. Are we together? I am a prayer person. No, respectfully speaking, that is wrong. I am a word person. That is wrong. 
you may be well intentioned you are never given an option to choose between prayer or the word or fellowship or love for the brethren love for the brethren is a mandate and a command it has nothing to do with whether you like it or not you must love the brethren for how can you say you love God whom you have not seen when you do not love your brother whom you can see is hypocrisy the test of your love for God is love for the brethren are we together I'll stop here so that I can speak over the sick speak over Belkuta and then we're done for the night. Has someone learned something? Please rise up on your feet. They continued steadfastly in doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, prayers doctrine fellowship breaking of bread prayers doctrine fellowship breaking of bread prayers all four must be captured in your spiritual experience all four must be captured in your church all four must be captured in your mentorship system if you want to see a people grow holistically I believe in what God is doing in Nigeria, especially at this prophetic time. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly before we pray, there's no point wasting your time. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, the church, Jesus said the church will be built on the rock. And the first rock is the revelation of Jesus. In every gathering like this, as you would read, when you get to verse 44, thereabout, it says, and the Lord added daily to their number as many as should be saved the truth is that there are people here from maybe tuesday or whenever this started you have been coming but right where you are you know that you need to make your ways right with jesus you do not know jesus sincerely and you have not made things right with jesus for others you are saying i truly need to rededicate my life sincerely wherever you are Please give me the honor and the joy of leading you to Jesus. You may be the one person who your family is waiting for. You may be that like that man in Gadara. I'm going to count one to five. You want to make it right with Jesus or a rededication? Leave your seat and run. Come right now. Wherever you are, let's celebrate them as they come. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they come. Don't sit back there when you should come to Jesus. Apostle, I need to make it right with Jesus. Abel Kuta, is this how you celebrate a harvest? Come. Come. No matter how far, come. 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 Who do men say that I am? Some say you are a miracle worker. Some say you are the one who give people jobs. Some say you are the one who give marriages. Some say you are the best of all the founders of religions. But Peter said, I know who you are. You are the Messiah. You are the Messiah. You are Messiah. You are Messiah. Messiah. Messiah, you are Messiah, Messiah. Listen, keep coming. Do you know, you can never tell how many trees come out of a seed. You can count the amount of fruits that come. These ones right now, as you see them, they may represent the mantle for the next move of God within this city. There is no limit to how far. And for some of you, you are seated and you are saying, Apostle, I want to come out, but I really am not sure. I remember I've made a decision like this before. But right now, the way my life is, I cannot exactly tell if I'm serious with God. I have a few seconds for you. Come out and join them as I pray. There is something called the assurance of salvation. Come. Don't be ashamed. That's why we are here for you. Come. Come.
hallelujah i salute every one of you and for those who are connecting by way of television or internet here is your chance to make jesus lord of your life sincerely no matter what else you receive the revelation of jesus as the christ the christ does not just mean the anointed one it means the chosen one the one who was sent to die the price for your life was his life and he's giving you a new opportunity right now it doesn't matter how far you are veered off the bible says that anybody who calls upon the name of the lord that individual will be saved lift your right hand high above your head ladies and gentlemen and say this loud and clear after me say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i declare that you are my savior you are my lord and you are my king i declare that the power of sin of satan of hell and of the grave is broken over my life I obtain grace to live a victorious Christian life in the name of Jesus I am a child of God from tonight and forever amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious people here in Abel Kota they have come responding to your call I pray Lord Jesus let this be the beginning of glorious moments in their lives according to the integrity of god's word i declare your sins forgiven and in the mighty and matchless name of jesus i speak over your life that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life you walk the victorious life and in the name of jesus you will fulfill your destiny in christ in jesus name i pray now please very quickly I want you to follow the counselor waving the placard all of you in concert very quickly please comply with the instructions and the demands they will make of you just for a minute or two and you will rush back to join us in the service let's honor them as they go celebrate them as they go hallelujah now very quickly I want you to lay your hands where you are trusting God for healing sadly we may not have the time to take testimonies because I have to honor the time we've stretched you a bit but lay your hands there there are many people who came trusting God for a miracle did you come per adventure with any prayer request I'm not sure you did so I'll just speak generally over us I'm going to speak over your body I'll be done for tonight please lay your hands I believe in the healing power of Jesus You've seen the testimony of our dear sister who God granted a miracle. Miracles are real. They are not stage managed. They are not a figment of men's imagination. It is a demonstration of the love and the might of Jesus. Lay your hands, I want to pray for you. You can also stand for someone who is sick far beyond this place and the power of God is able to touch them. As I shout the name of Jesus, I want you to shout a thunderous amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that every spirit of infirmity that has followed you to this ground or follow those that you are standing in for by the power that raised Christ from the dead we declare that it gives way now from the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet be healed in Jesus name 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 blood diseases be healed in Jesus name migraines be healed in Jesus name bone conditions be healed in Jesus name any stranger in your body that has not been planted by God we uproot it right now right now in the name of Jesus and in the same vein I speak over everyone here that has been in any kind of demonic captivity we announce your exodus now in the name of
name of Jesus Christ eye conditions be healed ear conditions be healed heart conditions be healed genotype issues be corrected fertility issues be corrected failed organs receive brand new organs in the name of Jesus Christ and if there is anybody you know who has been given any death sentence as far as sickness is concerned maybe suffering from cancer or suffering from whatever in the name of Jesus we speak life to them we declare that they will not die in the mighty name of Jesus now I stand in faith with the fathers here represented over Abel Kuta over the southwest and I decree and declare the role you have to play in the global revival the role you have to play in the continental revival across Africa the role that you have to play as far as the revival in Nigeria is concerned obtain grace to play it with honor in the name of Jesus Christ I declare over someone here your bishopry could not be taken by another all those who have been sent as watchmen to prepare people in the place of priesthood obtain grace to be effective in your assignment the communicators of doctrine who have been given the eye of the spirit to dissect scripture and bring understanding to the body receive grace to be effective the pastors that have been mandated to take care of God's flock in the name of Jesus I declare that you will be effective the apostles and the prophets that have been mandated to coordinate the spiritual activities across their predefined territories receive grace to serve God's purposes with humility in the name of Jesus the kingdom financiers that have been mandated to be empowered by wisdom and to supply resources that make for this coming revival obtain grace to be effective in the mighty name of Jesus and I pray for all within the land of Abel Kuta it will be a tragic thing if this kind of prophetic and apostolic conference is happening yearly and then it does not translate to the spiritual advancement the socio-economic advancement of the people within the land therefore I led my voice with every man of God here we pray first for every church in Abel Kuta regardless the denomination regardless the platform provided they name the name of Christ and contribute towards the building and the maturing of the saints be empowered afresh in the name of Jesus be empowered afresh in the name of Jesus we pray for every business and every economic structure that has been put in this land to provide value and better the lives of people in the name of Jesus the wisdom and the favor you need to thrive and remain receive it in the name of Jesus we pray for this ministry that have so graciously provided the platform year in year out for us to be blessed in the name of Jesus we stand in faith with the angel over this ministry and we declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead that that which comes upon men who give their all to the program of God let it come upon this ministry let it come upon God's servant let it come upon all who walk with him in the name of Jesus Christ please hear me for all who have given for this program financially in terms of prayer I got to understand that there was a prayer team that was put up specifically for am I right on that men who kept praying you didn't just come people prayed that God will clear the atmosphere for you to come the Bible says a worker is deserving of his wages we pray in the name of Jesus for everyone who is part of the prayer team and the workforce here of ABM may the God of heaven who is the rewarder of men reward you speedily in the name of Jesus 
let me declare that everyone who is here present you will not be absent by next year's program we have two more months to the end of the year this is where the waster is unleashed over destinies there is a spirit called the waster you will just hear that someone shouted my head my head and just died let me speak over your life if there is any plague of death over you to say you will not finish this year with honor and with dignity i command death to pass over you now death passes over you now and in the name of jesus as part of our spiritual and corporate responsibility we lend our voice in this conference to pray over the future of nigeria we decree and declare father arise over this nation february is the election we have just a few months in the name of jesus we decree and declare every quickness to tie down this nation and put it under siege we stand as priests upon the watchtower and we declare the purposes of god for nigeria must be established in the name of jesus finally let me pray a fire I have learned that you do not have anything valuable if the spiritual substance that makes up your life is low or not there no matter what else you have if you lose touch with spiritual reality you have lost touch with everything therefore I pray for you from the depth of my heart your hunger for God your hunger for the things of God your hunger for the place of the altar your hunger for the Word of God your hunger for consecration and walking in uprightness and holiness and righteousness may that great you will be a believer in word you will be a believer in deed you will be a believer in lifestyle you will be a believer in character and for your family members that you left wherever you left to come here in the name of jesus because you are here on this ground we send angels on assignment by the word of the lord to bring to pass that which is needed in their in their lives in this season in the name of jesus christ pastor shola thank you so very much pastor shegu thank you abel kuta thank you for receiving our ministry the Lord bless you, the Lord honor you, in Jesus' name. If you want to shout, you can shout. in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin